Each of you in the Witches of Eastwick possesses a talent, and the talent is left. I must say about the Witches of Eastwick that I think it's a wicked, witty, clever movie that for a change with its screenplay neither insults nor assaults, but makes you really sit and think about the male-female relationships that are happening on the screen with Daryl Van Horn, played by Jack Nicholson. And I've been looking at Michelle sitting here and wondering, is there any reason, Michelle, why you're not wearing your wristwatch? <laughs> is it because Cher and Susan didn't get one and you don't want to hurt them? Where's the wristwatch Jack Nicholson else. gave you? It's at home. Are you wearing yours? Well, I wasn't the only one. Are you wearing yours? Well, no. No? Well, I just thought you might have them on. You know, sort of, let's thank Jack publicly for his generosity. Well, we can just, we've, it's we've been thanking well, Jack oh, all where day. Is Where's your Johnny watch? It's you, at home. Oh, mine is too. Michelle, will you describe the watch since you got yours first? You arrived for rehearsals first, That's didn't you? Good. What is the watch Jack Nicholson gave you? Well, it has a red band or a black band. It's interchangeable. And on the face of the watch, in the center is a devil, and the there's a t the t the tail, and there's a, a, a pointy tail, which are the hands, right? And a yeah, pitchfork, right. pitchfork, pitchfork, and a pitchfork. Right. Yeah. God bless. You. Thank you. Now, how how was it that you were? Was it just availability and scheduling? You arrived first for rehearsals with Jack Nicholson. Mm -hmm. Were Sharon and Susan working on other things that I you arrived for? I was just cast. That my part was just set before the other two were. And of course you had to get there early for those tennis lessons. So that you'd yes. look good with that racket. In well, you know, I worked and worked at playing tennis and you can't even see it in the movie. But yeah, I worked real hard at those tennis well lessons. In the movie. I look like an idiot. But Michelle, that's because <laughs> her eyes are following the ball. Yeah. I won't spoil it for people about to see The Witches of Eastwick, but our eyes really are following the ball in that scene. <laughs> the finished version, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, of the, course. The ball wasn't effects. there. Exactly. That was maybe the most humiliating scene I had to do in the movie. Let me, let me resolve something, Cher, because you, you did go to the New York, was it the New York premiere and party of Scarface with Chastity? Yes, I did. Did you, on that evening, meet Michelle Pfeiffer for the no. first time? Why I wasn't not? there. Oh, you weren't? The star of the movie wasn't there? No, I wasn't there. Where were you while Cher and Chastity were at the premiere of your movie? I was in Italy doing Lady Hawk. Well, there you are. Mm -hmm. What did you think, Cher, when you saw Scarface? I mean, I know I'm projecting. You had no idea at that time that you would one day be working with Michelle in film. But what are your memories now of that evening of sitting through Scarface? I, I remember it very clearly. Chastity and I went, and I remember being very, very excited in the beginning. I'm thinking, well, this is really interesting. And I remember the first scene that Michelle has where she comes down the elevator, and I thought that she was one of the most beautiful women I'd ever seen. And then I thought how good she was. And she has a scene uh, where she's sitting in front of her mirror after they've been married and everything is a wreck. And she's doing some cocaine, and she's just a mess. And I was thinking how great she was in this scene. And then as the movie progressed, I thought, I understood what he was going for, but I understood how the audience couldn't possibly understand that w the excess that he was going for, and, and it became the movie. I left the movie, but I never actually left the characters. You know, I got, I got bored with the movie, but I always was really interested in the, in the characters. Well, actually, I, I was less interested in the characters towards the end when he went crazy and his sister and all that stuff. But up until then I was quite fascinated. But I thought that Michelle was really amazing. And then I wondered why I hadn't seen her that much before. And then we talked about it and she told me the things that she had done. And so I, I kind of realized why I hadn't seen her before. <laughs> Michelle, you're laughing. What, what were the things you had done that you told Cher about? I don't remember what I told her. What, what did I tell you? Well, you told me something about TV. Yeah, I've done a lot of television. It. And, and yeah. Grease, too, which uh -huh. I hadn't seen. And, mm -hmm. and, and it was like, for me, I just, Michelle was like, I didn't really know who she was when I saw Scarface. So, so you'd never seen Michelle on Delta House? No. <laughs> oh, Mich nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> Susan, let me, let me offer something to you, because all three of you 
as actors have shared something about the experience of the theater. And within the bizarre industry of entertainment, each of you have learned in your own unique way how the theater gives the actor the credibility the actor fights and works for all of his or her life. And you said something about an actor has to believe that the character they play is totally justified in what they do under the circumstances. Can we say that about the woman you are in The Witches of Eastwick? And it really applies to all three of you. Oh, yeah, and I think the other thing that's important is to find something that you passionately want as a character. And you did in this character? I wanted him. That's what I decided. It wasn't anywhere to be seen, but that's what I decided, that that was the first time that Jane had ever really been in love, and so she was there for someone who just wanted to believe him so badly that she would turn her head about anything and give every, you know, constantly give him another chance. And if we could just talk, there were some lines that were cut when he's coming down the hallway completely, it's a monster, and I said something like, well, maybe if we just talk to him, maybe, you know, we haven't loved him enough, maybe, you know. So that was my choice with Jane. Sure, I just wonder, I remember one of your, your holiday trips, you were in Aspen, and among the guests with whom you shared that particular trip, I think Britt Eklund was there, and Apollonia, and Angelica Houston. And Jack. Did you, did you meet and become friendly with Jack at that time? I actually have known Jack, I, I, I met him much longer ago than that, but that trip, I guess, was the first time I actually spent time with him. I never really knew him until, un, until this movie. I never really felt like I knew him. I was never comfortable with him, but it wasn't, didn't have much to do with Johnny. It had more to do with my feelings of being comfortable with him. And, and after the movie started, I, I was able to see who he was and not who, who we've made him and who we choose the size of him and also who he shows us. You know, when you're close to him, you get to see something as it should be, I think, that is only saved for the people that he really cares about. Don't you think Jack Nicholson might say the same thing about you? I don't know what Johnny might say about me. I, I have no idea about that. I say that in a complimentary no, 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 but way I mean, because I, we think yes, other right. actors all have impressions of other actors. And half of that is what each of you has learned in your own way about the burden of the image you bring to work. And I think of you, Cher, packing to go on location to do Silkwood. And while you were packing a bag, you burst into tears with the reality that you were going to work with Meryl Streep. No, that I couldn't work with Meryl Streep. That you couldn't, sorry. But Meryl Streep's generosity, which I assume, seeing the results on screen, the three of you have shared, was to put her arms around you and embrace you and tell you how good it was that you were there. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time with that. You know, we all see ourselves as where we came from and, and not where we are. I mean, I'm uh, certainly aware of the power I have today. And yet, on the same hand, I know where I've come from. I don't, you know, it's like when I see Sue's work, let's say, you know, and I go, Jesus, that's just, it's fabulous. Or when I see Misha's work and I say, oh, that's fabulous. It inspires a certain kind of awe and you forget about who you are. You know, it's like I, I just worked with this boy in the studio, John Bon Jovi, who's just sold like eight million records. And, and I was so excited that he would take time to come off his tour and produce me. And, and when he met me, he was so excited that I would want to work with him because he was a janitor the last time I saw him. You just forget those kind of things. You know, you just, you don't think of who you are when you're in awe of someone else. Out of the three of you, and Susan has made comments about the childlike quality that is required in the actor. And Susan is a mother, which you weren't the last time I saw you, because you were not in New York at the time of compromising positions. Cher is a mother, and your friend Meryl Streep has always maintained that her own fascination with the observation of her children is one of the reasons she is able to sustain the childlike quality of being an actor. Mm -hmm. Michelle is not a mother, 
and ironically in the film, is a very young mother of six children. And I just wondered if Susan had her child and Cher had her son nearby, because Chastity's in school, if you were observing your friends and co-stars' children. Or did you lean on the children playing your children? Well, I, I spend time with the, with the children playing my children. Also, I have neighbors and where I live in Los Angeles. The woman next door has, has three little kids that are like stepping stones, and I spent a lot of time with them. And I have to say, I was rather intimidated to have to, to, have to play a mother. I think, though, that growing up, my sisters, when I was um, six, my mother had my two younger sisters, and I became, at a very young age, kind of surrogate mother to my two younger sisters. And even now that they're, they're grown up, I still kind of play that role with them. So there is kind of, uh, I have sort of had experience mothering, but, but uh, I, that still doesn't replace, you know, actually bearing your own children. I thought it was amusing watching the movie. And for those who have not read the John Updike and are about to see the movie, I wouldn't presume to spoil anything. But there's a very important moment in the film where the three of you joined forces, literally. And I mm -hmm. thought, watching the scene, isn't it a good thing that Cher had once met the Pope? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <Do> you, <laughs> no, I'm just thinking of the religious, <laughs> godlike, devil-like thing. Do you remember when you were on tour once in Europe in the late 60s and had an audience with the Pope? Yes, I do. It was the first time I had to go by a dress. Really? Mm -hmm. Which Pope was this? Uh, it was a couple of popes ago. So it took the pope to get you to wear a dress, It huh? was. Well, you can't go and see the pope unless you're in a dress. And so I bought the mm. most fabulous little, like, nun-like dress. It was black crepe. It wasn't too short. It had little white cuffs and a little white collar. Is that the dress that you wore to Elijah's school, the mom's dress? No, I, I don't have any more. I don't have any more mother dresses. Susan, am I, am I correct in believing, by the way, I, I want to point out, because Canadians are looking at you, that you, you are indeed one of the winners of the Canadian Oscar, which is known in the Canadian film industry as the Genie Award, which you won for your extraordinary work. It, it was Atlantic City, That's correct? Right. That's right. And you showed up in Toronto, which Cher knows rather well. Yes. Now, Michelle, have you spent any time in Canada? No. At all? Is it no, I was in Toronto once just for a couple of days for publicity, but that's all. Oh, as long as it's nothing we've ever said or done to you. No. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> But, but Susan has indeed spent time, and Cher has certainly spent time, and Norman Jewison loves telling affectionate stories about you. Has he? Oh, yes. Oh, hey. many. Beyond your cooking prowess mm -hmm. in downtown Toronto for cast and crew. Right. Well, I... During I, shooting I, of Moonstruck. Right. But I didn't exactly... I was... You know who really was responsible was Vincent. Vincent was fabulous. Oh, Vincent Gardini. Yeah. Vinny just kind of... I just was... I was the taster, you know, and he was kind of the, the main cook and bottle washer. No, I just say this because of the time you and Susan have spent in Canada working was that Norman said that one of your very first questions upon arrival was, where could you get good furs? Yes. Now, Actually, I, I said that before. That, oh, you said it before yes, you got there. Yes, I said there. it in New York, I said it. Now, did you find them? Yes, I did, in Toronto. Well, there you are. <laughs> there, now, Susan, did you find any furs in Toronto? Were you looking? I'm not a very professional shopper. I, I'm still a novice. Cher has taken me under her wing, but I, I you know. <laughs> She's getting almost, better like, all the time. But Susan, be careful. She made Meryl Streep take off her plastic shoes. That's uh -oh. true, dude. She's no, very she, tough she to shop with. She wouldn't take them off, though. Everyone talks about influences that actors share and effects they have on each other. And I know Susan's history and, and friendship in the workshop in New York with people like Richard Dreyfus, and then working together on screen in, in the buddy system. And I think of Cher doing the play for Robert Altman. And there is a name that one can mention with other actors. And the people who knew and worked with Sudi Bond know what this woman represented to theater and her limited exposure in film. But Cher, you did get to work with Sudi Bond and Jimmy Dean. Right, and in Silkwood. And in Silkwood, of course. We worked together in the play. And <laughs> I have to tell you something. Sudi, I mean, Sudi was just the funniest little lady in the world, and just amazing woman. But the first time we ever met, she thought I was trying to mug her, but she didn't have the nerve to tell me until the middle of the play. 
We were going up to Robert's apartment, and I had on my black motorcycle jacket, and I had on a pair of leather pants and sunglasses, and I, f I was trying to get in the building, and it pushed in, and I'm trying to, like, pull it out, right? So we go in, and she goes in the elevator, and I follow her in the elevator, and she punches the button, and I get off after her, and she, and she goes up to the door, and I'm walking behind her, and she, two months into the play, she said, Cher, I thought, you, should I, I had no idea who you were, should I, I just thought you were going to mug me. You know, and, and she was just a hysterical kind of woman and great to work with and great. I, I thought she was great in Jimmy Dean and I also thought she was fabulous. I had no scenes with her in, in Silkwood because her character wasn't really supposed to like my character. But she was really a fun, fun person to, to work with and I learned a lot of things from her. I should point out for those who have not yet seen The Witches of Eastwick that it would make, after they have seen it, it might make someone nervous to be sitting in front of the three of you. Eating However cherry. comfortable you look at this point. I want to say something else about one of your co-stars. Uh -huh. I'm sitting here with the three of you, and Veronica Cartwright, yet again, does the Fabulous. most difficult mm. character brilliantly, mm. and all the time we are supposed to loathe this woman. Mm -hmm. She Correct. manages as an actor to give her several layers. She has subtext in everything she's doing, and you know this woman knows something and she's right. It's like Martha Mitchell goes to mm. Eastwick oh, and no yes. one will listen. She's brilliant. She was Veronica. brilliant. She now, was Susan, brilliant. had you worked with her in New York? Have you worked with no. Veronica? No, I never met her until this. And it was Johnny's idea. She's just really? brilliant. Mm -hmm. Now, you're referring to Jack Nicholson mm -hmm. as Johnny. Y yes. And just that I, I think someone might not know that it was Jack Nicholson. Right. Mr. Nicholson's idea, absolutely. <laughs> oh, really? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was right on as usual. Mm-hmm. Because he had worked with her in a couple of movies, I think, Going South and, and, or maybe that's not, but some movies he had directed, Veronica had been in. Well, I remember how wonderful she was in The Right Stuff. Mm -hmm. She really is a fine actress, and of course we remember and she... the first Alien. That's right, and she's from childhood. I mean, mm -hmm. those TV Leave series. Leave It to Beaver. <laughs> you remembered, Susan. I know, I saw it recently. She was in Leave It to Beaver? I just saw it when we were on location, I saw her. Walking at the dentist's office, Beaver was inside. Uh, was she outside. Beaver's age or was she Wally's she age? She was Beaver's age. I can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> well, as Pokey said in the group, who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk it? We all never get to get... do one. Yeah. Never. I compliment you all in the Witches of Eastwood. Thank you. Pleasure.